Hi, I'm Aravind. I'm a faculty in chemical engineering. So uh, we do research in solar energy and uh, our pre predominant business is developing solar cells and uh, solar fuel systems to understand the fundamental science and to develop prototypes. And uh, we are beautifully funded by a bunch of funding agencies where uh, we get uh, money to develop uh, prototypes or to do uh, good fundamental science. And uh, now I'd like to show our labs. Just walk with me. Hey, funny, don't go for a photo. Walk with me. <laughs> This is a beautiful lab which has really expensive and very sensitive equipment to do very good fundamental science. And uh, here we have two partitions. One is for solar energy characterization and the other one is for uh, beautiful fundamental spectroscopy. So uh, let's walk inside further. And by the way, both the labs are uh, beautifully powered by uh, two independent UPSs so that um, the instruments don't get affected by the power surge. Just get it! Here. My guys are beautifully working and uh, we are literally 19 people in the group at the moment with a uh, postdoc, 6 PhD students, 3 MS and a bunch of uh, M.Tech and undergraduate students. Great, thank you. Enjoy the lab tour. This is a photoelectrochemical workstation. It consists of an electrochemical workstation which has two separate channels for two independent measurements and a xenon arc lamp that simulates solar spectra. Here uh, in our lab, we are using this instrument for the study of solar water splitting in which what we are doing is, uh, we are doing the photoelectrochemical measurements and generating fuel out of it. Now, uh, these are the graphs that we get in this instrument. This is the impedance graph and one more, uh, this is the uh, cyclic photometry graph. Since we have two channels, so two independent measurements can be done at a time. Hello everyone. This is spectrofluorimeter and it's a very sensitive equipment that can observe the changes happening in the time scale of 10 raised to power minus 12 seconds. You know a human brain response time is 0.25 seconds. So this detector is millionth of time faster than a human brain. So for this equipment we need some specific kind of laser diode, pulse laser diodes uh, which are in the time scale of picoseconds and the nanoseconds. We also have filters to cut the wavelength and the intensity of the light reaching to the detector. So talking about the uh, working principle, so we incident the monochromatic light on the sample which will jump the electron from the ground state to the excited state. So this equipment measures for how long the electron will stay in the excited state before coming back to the ground state and emit the fluorescent light. So talking about the results we are having here, this is how we get our excited electron decay data for any specific material that we are analyzing. Hi guys, so this is UVBIS NIR spectrophotometer and uh, we measure the absorption properties of the material. And, uh, we can use film, liquid or uh, solid samples. We okay, open it. We have an integrating sphere. We have a detector along with it. And here is where we keep our samples. And we illuminate the light. And uh, this will be one of the UVV spectrum for one of our samples. And with, there is an increase in absorption. And this onset wavelength will give you the band gap of the material. Hi guys, uh, we are building spectroelectrochemical workstation uh, which is used to do quantum uh, efficiency measurements and also electrochemistry. So this is the source meter uh, which is used to do electrochemistry studies and this is the light source which is connected to green filter and detector through which we can do quantum efficiency measurements. Hello guys, now I am going to show you how to make a solar cell. So out of the many techniques used to make solar cell, this is one of the most efficient one when it comes to large area solar cells. So this is a screen printing setup. In this we load our materials in which we want to uh, coat on the top of the air. So we will we'll just squeeze our uh, layer on top of the solar cell and what we finally get is the printed 
different printed layers on top of the solar uh, FTO. This is the final device that we get. This device is then tested into the solar cell test station. This consists of a solar simulator which has a xenon arc lamp and a Kepler source which measures the current versus voltage characteristics. So we, from that we can find the efficiency of the solar cell. Earlier we were testing our small devices using the solar simulator. Now this is just the large version of it. This setup we have built it ourselves in our lab. We are going to use this basically to test our large area solar cells for which we are making for this room. The setup is same as we see earlier. We have a key clay, we have a DC power supply, and we are analyzing the data using the software. Hello. So this experimental setup is known as slung line. We use this for air phase synthesis. Air phase synthesis in order to prevent the compound from getting contaminated from reacting component of air that is oxygen or water generally. And the gases we use for air phase synthesis are usually argon or nitrogen. And this setup can be also used for creating vacuum.